Our next speaker for the day is Naveen Chalasani, who will be speaking on Grill, a framework for validation of Golang microservices. He is an expert, uh, an experienced software engineer who has demonstrated many years in the corporate industry. Please welcome Naveen to the stage. Hello. Hey guys, can you hear me? Mask, 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 mask. Hello. Yeah. So today I'll be talking about a testing framework called Grill. Uh, so about me. I've been a software developer for nine years now. I've been working in Swiggy for three years. I've worked in various domains in Swiggy. I've started with order fulfillment. I've then moved to GPS ping data ingestion and currently working in the routing domain. So most of the systems are designed, uh, are distributed, which, are, which needs to deal with high throughput data at low latencies. I've also done some contributions uh, to open source, uh, specifically to Netflix Conductor. It's a workflow engine uh, which Netflix uses to post-process its videos. Uh, so I've done some feature uh, features and also bug fixes for it. I'm also co-creator of the library grill, which we'll be discussing today. Yeah, so before we start on the technical aspects of the grill, uh, I just want to share a personal story uh, about how I came to realize the importance of tests. Uh, so in fact, at the start of my career, I was, I was not very too keen on writing tests. I always used to skip it <laughs> and always find a ways to just meet the coverage rules. So this changed when I had an opportunity to work with one of the senior developers. We were, we were working in an early startup at that time, and we were working on a project with a very aggressive timeline. Uh, one thing I noticed him do uh, was that he was writing tests uh, like he always does. He was covering every branch and line of the code. <laughs> so I talked to him. I asked him, like, does he really have to do that? We could have easily skipped the test, by the way, uh, because it's a startup and we were working very aggressively. So what he replied that day had changed uh, the way I look at tests and also probably inspired me to build this library. So he replied saying that, you know, it's because we are working on a tight deadline, we need more and more tests. So this has changed the way I look at the tests forever. In Swiggy, uh, tests are of uh, high importance as well. But one thing we noticed uh, as Swiggy grew is that the number of microservices grew from tens to hundreds. And even, we, even if you're focusing on writing good unit tests, we were still seeing that uh, releases were not smooth. There were failures. Uh, there were uh, releases were getting delayed. The reason for this is you we need to understand how microservices work and how they are different from monoliths. If you take a look at here, we'll see that there are a lot of microservices. There's a lot of network communication happening between them. There are a lot of databases. And it's hard to figure out what exactly is going on here, much less to test it. So uh, if we were to list down what are the challenges uh, and why unit tests were not enough, we can uh, probably uh, tell these are the three things which are not covered in unit tests. So that the network communication is not covered, the protocols are not covered, and also the API contract is not covered. We typically mock the data and simply uh, test the service logic part of it. But in a microservice world, the network communication is also a major part of the service which remains untested using unit test. And due to this, even if we had written good unit tests, we were seeing issues in production. So we'll zoom into a bit, uh, into a microservice code. So this is what a typical microservice looks like. We'll have some contracts exposed. Uh, the we'll have some contracts exposed. It'll be listening to a queue. It'll connect to a database. It'll depend on some L2 level services, which it calls some HTTP or gRPC endpoints. Uh, now, if you look at here, service logic is one part of the code, but there are other parts, the database listeners, it's a database clients, the listeners, and also gRPC HTTP clients. All these remain untested in unit tests. So in Swiggy, we started uh, writing, doing something new. We started writing service tests, which are a little bit different from unit tests, as these also cover all these parts which we discussed, the listeners, API contracts, gRPC clients, database clients. But it's not as simple as, uh, as simple to do. Because when we first started it, 
developers were reluctant very reluctant to write them because simply because they, they were very complex uh, it used to take mo take more time to write them and um, people were uh, not interested because it took more time to write them than to actually write the code required so uh, we identified what are the challenges uh, to our goal was to make it simple as simple as writing a unit test so these are the challenges we have identified so to do a service test we need to set up all the dependencies in local for example if if a service depends on dynamo we need dynamo in the local if it depends on kafka we need kafka in the local we uh, in addition to this once these dependencies are set up we also would need to interact with them uh, for example uh, we will need to create a dynamo db uh, dynamo db table we also need to create a kafka topic publish to that kafka topic and for all this we need to write lot of boilerplate code to clear the clients to all all to do to do all the test setup and uh, there are several ways people were each doing in their own way so the way they were doing writing the service level test differed from each team to each te other team this also created issues in reviewing the code because there is a lot of uh, boilerplate code written and it's very it became very hard to review the tests as well so uh, we focused on making the service level test simpler so grill grill is a library which has organically been developed in swiggy uh, with the goal of making the test simpler uh, before we discuss uh, how grill solved the problem we'll also talk about how did swiggy do it before grill so we we mainly had two major options before grill we used to use docker compose uh, we used to have shell scripts to bring up all the dockers required for a service we then used to configure them and then execute shell again execute the tests using uh, shell scripts again the second approach was we depended on ci environments to have these dependencies up and running so that we can run the tests but none of them uh, made the service level test uh, simple as unit test you still need some specialized setup uh, some uh, some knowledge to know how to run this and they're also not debuggable like unit tests you can't pick and choose one unit one service test to run unit you, you run the shell script you run all the test cases uh, so we wanted uh, grill to solve these problems so one of the major things we wanted was that it should provide a programmatic interface for it to be similar to unit test it should be done uh, via within the test to do this uh, and it should also look like a table driven unit test similar to other unit tests we typically write in golang to do this we have uh, depended on test containers library which is already open sourced so this provides a programmatic interface over the docker api so we can launch any docker which we need however uh, we made uh, we wrapped it over we we did a wrapper over the test containers and have also written the boilerplate code so that any docker which is required for microservice can be bought up with a single line and in some places we have found that there are no dockers available uh, for us to uh, use them uh, in the way we want uh, for example for grpc when we had evaluated we couldn't find a docker uh, image which could solve our use case in such cases we have even built cult custom implementations from scratch so we'll uh, go a little bit more deeper into grill we'll talk about uh, what is the structure how does the how what is what are the main interfaces of the grill how does uh, grill work so we see here these are the four major steps uh, we want uh, which are needed for executing a test in uh, grill so and these are not very specific to grill in fact these are uh, these are parts of any test case any unit test case even uh, for example the first one is the stubs where we will declare all the stubs needed for the service test to run uh, for example if a service is dependent on another service uh, for an http response then we would stub the http response so grill would internally be using wiremock itself it would just be providing a programmatic interface over it so uh, for example if a service a depends on service b and needs an http response from service b we will stub the service b response here and once the stubbing is done then we will invoke the api of the microservice uh, for example we, if the if the microservice exposes an http endpoint then we will invoke the http endpoint 
and once the endpoint has been invoked uh, we would observe some result of it so we'll then check whether our expectation is what uh, is meeting with what is exactly returned there and once this is done there's a fourth step which is also cleaning up the state uh, so this is because we are not just running one test case we would want to run multiple test cases uh, and each test case would we would ideally want it to run with a clean slate uh, so that one test case does not affect the other test case uh, so for example if there is a dynamo db we would want to clean up the dynamo data database and if it's a kafka we want to clear up the topics we'll go into more depth uh, going forward but i just wanted to introduce what are the core construct uh, which are available in the grill Uh, so this is a list uh, of the all the containers which are currently supported in the grill uh, these are what uh, these are all the containers which are typically uh, we found most useful in right in testing microservices within swiggy so you can see here there are uh, there is a list of containers like http grpc dynamo and there are like what are, what are the stub methods assertions and cleaners which we are exposing for each of these containers now i'll take a um, now we'll take a uh, example and then we'll uh, go into depth as to how uh, it used to work before grill and after grill uh, so for to do this we'll consider a simple service uh, let's say service foo which exposes a grpc endpoint and it depends on dynamo database and also publishes to kafka topic so this is what we used to do before uh, grill was there we used to have a, a docker compose file for example here we need dynamo and kafka so we used to have a bunch of uh, a huge docker compose file where we'll have uh, all the dockers listed and once this is done we also would need we also used to have a shell script now the shell script used to be i'm not going to walk you through the whole uh, scripting as such because it's quite huge i just want to give you an idea how it used to work so the shell script uh, will uh, typically bring up the docker compose it'll clean up the state it'll see some data and then uh, the tests are executed right uh, so this is quite tedious as people would need to know uh, how the shell script needs to be executed and this differ from repo to repo uh, we could have even uh, built a, built a wrapper to uh, structure this across services but there is also one other problem uh, the seed data here is common for will be common for all the tests we want we want to do various service tests testing all the service behaviors that is not po that is only possible if you can manipulate the stubs per each test case so that same test case if you were to return with grill this is how it would look like so this is a table driven test Uh, which is very similar to how it will look like if it is um, if it is if it is any other unit test so if you see here it will again have all the four methods we have discussed before the stubs uh, the action assertion and the cleaners now if you look here the stubs we are doing uh, kafka.create topics dynamo.create table which will create the necessary topics and the table which for which the service needs to work on once the stubs are created we are also uh, we are also do, uh, performing an action we are calling an a grpc endpoint here the create address endpoint with a particular uh, request we need and once the action is invoked we will then check whether the, our expectation is matching with the uh, uh, result so we are checking we are if we have gotten a successful response from the api in the assertion block and once this is done we are also cleaning up the data in the dynamo db we are emptying the dynamo da database table and we are also clearing up the topics so uh, as the service uh, as the library evolved in swiggy we not only uh, focused on making uh, service tests simpler we also focused on making the service tests faster one of the things we noticed while testing asynchronous flows uh, is that uh, typically that involved writing time dot sleep so this quickly increase the amount of time which we need to execute the test uh, for example if we were to test whether a message has been published to kafka topic then uh, we have to uh, put a time dot sleep wait till the message is published and then assert on it because it's not a synchronous flow 
but uh, as in as in when we started increasing more and more uh, a time dot sleep the amount the time required to run the test suit has increased so uh, in parallel to that we have uh, created a utility called grill dot try for example so what it does instead of simply waiting for a required amount of time it waits till a particular condition is met so it's a conditional wait so um, in this case it waits till a if till a message is reached to the kafka so even though we are putting time we wait till 5 seconds if the condition is met in 10 milliseconds it will simply exit so we have seen that uh, the amount of time it requires to run in a particular repo has decreased from 3 uh, minute to 30 seconds once we have just used this one utility <coughs> so grill has been used in swiggy for 2 years now uh, we had had some testimonials from developers who had uh, found the benefits from this so one of the key factors uh, key things people uh, say is that before uh, grill we used to have separate uh, man days allocated for writing service test because it's quite complex uh, we used to have several days allocated in fact so what happened what changed was that because it became so simple as to write unit test we no longer do that the the testing is is involved is counted as part of development life cycle itself one other thing which had happened was that sltts were written very sparingly before because it's quite complex to set up and write we used to write just as the happy cases or some cases which we, which were very critical because now it became so simple we are writing so many test cases that all the service behaviors are covered so this not only increased the uh, test coverage but also improved the quality of tests so grill has started uh, organically within swiggy so in fact it was uh, started within uh, within one team where we, when we first were asked to create the service test and it has spread uh, to multiple teams through word of mouth so in the over the first year it has uh, there, there were over 100 microservices which were used which were using uh, grill and right now there are around 200 microservices in, within swiggy itself who are using it so swiggy felt that this can benefit the community at large and had open sourced it we also like strongly welcome uh, if you were to try it and give us your feedback and also uh, highly welcome any contributions to it <coughs> 